um, and again trying to give us time to go out and look at communities that may or may not want to to research this. I will say this about our company. Um, we're doing this proactively. We didn't have to come tonight and talk to you all. We go out of our way. We do not want to be in an area that doesn't want the place and, and doesn't want the type of facility that this is. And we think it's very positive. We have uh, people in 20 different locations, communities in 20 different locations around the United States that love the project. They love the jobs, they love the full-time benefits, they love the economics of the property tax and those types of things, but it's not for every community. And so what we are here to do tonight is just answer any questions. It's hard to get into too many specifics at this point because we really, we're not even sure Manchester's going to approve this location as a site. So we just want to be able to kind of answer any general questions about the industry, about this project, that the state is, is, is putting out to bid so that you are informed fully in a global view that this isn't some you know, uh, thought uh, that's just come up in the last couple of months or so. The state has really researched what they want to do with their prison system and it's not an enviable task to cite these projects around the, the communities. And so um, I'll just end with that and see if anybody else has any, any further questions. Uh, thank you, and I think there may be some. Uh, yes, uh, we'll, I think we'll start. Yes? Uh, I apologize. Go ahead. Could I have a two minute break? I need to go to the restroom. Okay, yes. Walk up to the other side. Two minutes. And I'll come back in two, we'll send the warden. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, we can, uh, if you, go ahead, I don't, if you have, go ahead. I just had a question, uh, Mr. Murphy. Um, looking at the, the footprint, a million square feet, how, how many, um, I don't want to say clients, um, <laughs> how, how, many, how many prisoners does that house? You know, that a million square feet is a building rendering that Dick Dene did to kind of show in the woods what the building would look like for that square foot. We probably will have about half of that type of square footage, more in a campus setting than one roof under one roof. Right now, the state's soliciting a 1,500-bed male facility, a 200-bed female facility, and then a hybrid facility that would combine the 1,500 and the 200. So ultimately, it would be a 1,700-bed facility that would house most of the prison system. Um, given the, the move towards privatization, do, do uh, state boundaries still come into play? Or if you have a client, let's say, in Maryland or Maine, is it at your discretion where they're housed, or do they have to stay within that? state. What I'm getting to is if, if you have a bigger footprint, say, in the New Hampshire facility, could you potentially house prisoners from another client state? Not without the approval of, of the city of Manchester or wherever we would locate, or most states have legislation that would require some type of authorization to do that. Uh, so those are typical laws or existing statutes. As we operate, we would never do that without the community's involvement in that type of process or decision-making process. Thank you. Uh, I get uh, Nancy and then <coughs> um, This sort of goes along with the same question as Mr. Dower had. Um, with the number of people there, $100 million, that's a lot of money to put in for 1,700 beds, wouldn't you say? No, it's not, it's not unusual at all. Um, we just built a prison, uh, an expansion of our prison in Arizona, a 2,000 bed expansion, uh, cost $138 million. So the price of construction is pretty, um, you know, especially for a site that has some of the challenges, terrain challenges that we would have in this particular site at Hackett Hill. But when you look at water, sewer, grading of land, cost of buildings, uh, doing things within union constraints of paying union wages and those types of things, building costs get pretty significant. So it is a pretty high number for someone who isn't used to that type of construction. Uh, but in our business, it's pretty typical for that size and scope of project. So there must be a rate of return that's there for you well, in the first place. We typically, and, and to explain the industry, um, the industry evolved by former state correctional administrators back in the, the late 70s and early 80s saying, 
you know, without the restraints from the states or the federal government, we could probably do things a lot more efficiently and effectively, kind of like highways, kind of like other privatization projects. Uh, they, these projects are typically in conservative states that have Republican leadership that are wanting less government, that want the private sector to come in with innovation to save taxpayer dollars. And so that history has created uh, uh, a system of we can do it, stats will show you and research will show you, we can build 30% cheaper than most state or federal governments because we just don't have the bureaucratic red tape that they have. That they have to go through master planning for five years, pay for architects, do those types of things. Administratively, we can get things done quicker and purchase quicker. On the operation side, most legislation in states, and again, there's 38 states that have uh, enabling legislation allowing for private prisons. I think the state of Vermont has been sending prisoners out of state uh, for, the, for the last several years as well. But in that legislation, there's a requirement that we have to be cheaper at a certain percentage, or at least cheaper than what the state operates for. So we can't just come in and say, here's the price, here's what it's going to do. There has to be a benefit to the state or to the federal agency that does this contracting. With that, we don't have unions typically, so we're not you know, held to a union standard or most you know, state wardens or federal wardens. They want more and more and more every year in a budget. Where we're held accountable, we can do things more effectively because, again, we don't have the restraints and we can staff these things more effectively. 80% of prison costs are labor. So even though I've got a $100 million building, that cost is going to go away in 20 years. 80% of it is staffing it, overtime, benefits. And what the cost savings really is in a lot of areas is the, the, the pension benefits. In this day and age, most governments can't afford to pay the pensions that most, most of the unions are requiring. And so those savings are there where we're able to make a, a decent profit as well as provide a, a cost savings to the, to the state or federal agencies. Vinny, you had a question? Yeah. This only hit the paper today or yesterday? Last Friday. Last Friday. And Saturday. <laughs> so you really haven't had any public meetings with the abutters? Uh, well, that's why I'm saying it's premature. We were still in our due diligence process, and we've been polling. So Manchester leadership had shown an interest in this project, so we're, we're in our due diligence process. The press got wind of it. It leaked out. And when we saw that you guys had some concerns about it being the neighbors to this potential site, even though, again, there's no preconceived notions yet because we're still in our bid preparation, our conceptual design, where do we cite this thing? We thought it was incumbent upon us to come talk to you and just make sure you got all the facts so there isn't any hysterical issues going around or rumors about what's really happening. We wanted to give you the facts of why we were in the newspaper last week. Is this going to be a minimum security, maximum security? It'll be all levels. It'll be all levels. It's pr pretty much that without the Berlin facility, it's pretty much the whole prison complex minus the, the Berlin folks that are up in Berlin. So there will be a small portion of maximum. Most of it will be minimum, medium. And then the women, there's a court order. And again, another reason for our industry, when states can't afford to upgrade their infrastructure, I believe there's some federal lawsuits pending at Goffstown that the women have filed, that when the, the, the black robes come in, you really don't want that to happen in your state because then there's fines and there's significant you know, fines for not taking care of having adequate accommodation. And I think that's been driving the talk of privatization from the state level for years now because I drove by Goffstown the other day and just from the outside I can see that it's probably not adequate enough to, to meet current standards. So this is going to be the entire state Minus the Berlin facility. Berlin is federal, though, isn't it? No, there's a state facility up there that houses about 700 inmates. Thank you. Uh, Jim, does the state of New Hampshire correction still the ones that determine where people will be placed? Yes. So if they want to transfer somebody to another state for some reason, and they can trade prisoners from another state? 
You know, I don't know that that's been done here. Um, again, the state has jurisdiction to do whatever they, they need to do, I think, as far as that's concerned. I've not heard that they would ever do that. I think what they're trying to do is say, with the 2,000 some odd inmates that we have today, what can we do to make our system more efficient? And if the private sector is the way to go, let's, let's put a bid out, let's take a look at it, let's see if it works for the state of New Hampshire. And so I've not heard that they plan on importing inmates. I've heard articles and seen articles over the last few years that talked about a regional type facility being built in New Hampshire and maybe contracting with Vermont and Maine because all of your prison systems here are very small which costs you a lot of money because there's not a lot of economy of scale. Now I've heard that talk, but again, I've heard that it's just been talk. And I've, one of my best friends is the commissioner in Maine. He said they, they'd never send inmates out of state up there. I know the Massachusetts commissioner, they're not interested in, in sending inmates. You're, you're basically sending jobs and economic development out to, to other people when you, you ship your prisoners somewhere else. Uh, yes, Todd? Uh, yeah, a question out of curiosity with the prison system. If you're transferring down from Concord or say or consolidating, um, whose jurisdiction does that come under in regards to legal services? Does that come under? It's all the same jurisdiction, basically. We are going to have a subcontract. The constitutional responsibility stays with the state of, of New Hampshire. So sentence computation, uh, disciplinaries, extending inmates time, we can't do that. So if you could just visualize a subcontract to operate one facility, the state will have contract monitors on site, we'll have a contract that holds us accountable for filling positions, providing all of the, the requirements in the contract that basically meet all the same requirements as the state of New Hampshire. We typically hire wardens from the states that we contract with because they know all of those policies and procedures. No, I think I was thinking of it as if you're transferring down. And, I mean, we, we're right on the border of Hillsborough County versus Merrimack County. And I was just wondering who's, if, it's, if the prison is located in Hillsborough County, does Hillsborough, Hillsborough County have the, uh, uh, um, have to uh, basically have jurisdiction to cover increased legal coverage? I mean, is that all in Hillsborough County or is it? Kind of when you say legal coverage, meaning uh, well, I mean, uh, well, you, as you stated, it uh, uh, prison uh, <laughs> prisoners tend to uh, file lawsuits. Yeah. Uh, for uh, and being a public, uh, being a private uh, operation, I, I when I read in about private, I mean, there's, there's a lot of junk science, or I will call it, sure. uh, uh, activists uh, who make all these different arguments. Yep. Um, I read a few things about Texas and another sure. thing about Colorado. Um, but one of the things that I found that was interesting in there was that, that one of the things they were talking about is you have that increased cost because now all of a sudden one jurisdiction has coverage for legal, the legal issues, either whatever services the, the <coughs> inmates need and, and so forth for legal, legal coverage. Let me, let me explain the, the process of how it's kind of bifurcated out. Um, if an inmate in a private prison contracted with the state of New Hampshire sues the state of New Hampshire because he doesn't like, he doesn't think his sentence computation was correct or that the state somehow violated his rights, that lawsuit would be filed against the state. If he's filing a lawsuit because I'm not providing adequate food or adequate things that relate to my performance and my contract, we indemnify the state and we handle any lawsuits that are our responsibility, but from a constitutional point, it would still stay in the jurisdiction of the state. What we will do is indemnify the state for any uh, lawsuits that happen, but we can't control a lawsuit that's filed by an inmate that has to deal with a state issue of whatever jurisdiction that is, if that answers your question. Yeah, another question. Um, and out of curiosity, I mean, I know that this is just a conceptual, but sure. one of the things I noticed right off the bat is there's no open space. And uh, in regards to? There, there will be. Again, I don't want you to look at the, these are conceptuals that, uh, that Mr. Dene has done over the years to kind of give a visual to people to say, here's what a building would look like on that Hackett Hill site. So it's one, under one roof. What, as I explained earlier, what we will do is have a campus style approach. There'll be a receiving and discharge building, an admin building. It's like a college campus, 